Hi, my name is Marcus, and welcome to Servant King. The first confusion program was called uh, Confusion of Mind. The second one was called Confusion of Being. The third one was called Confusion of Voice, which means personification. And this one is called Person, Confusion of Face. Have you ever wondered what a person is. Everybody uses the word, but does anyone know what it is? A few years ago, a man told me I was a foolish person. He says, Marcus, you're a foolish person. But I know I'm nobody's fool. But maybe I'm a person. So I went straight to the Webster's Dictionary to look up the word person. And it said... A person is primarily the mask of an actor used on stage. A mask is a person. Wow, I didn't know that. So I went back to this man and I asked him, I said, why am I hiding under a false appearance? Who am I trying to fool? Well, that's the purpose of this program. Now, nobody really said that to me. I'm just illustrating a point here. As I was reading through all the laws and legal systems and statutes and regulations, I noticed that all these laws apply to persons. And um, I never read anything in legal documents or statutes that apply to just a man. Never read a law that says, no man shall do this or no man shall do that. No, a man is self-evident. Look at somebody, that's a man. But is a person self-evident? So, I read laws that would say things like, no person shall drive a motor vehicle or you will suffer a penalty. Or no person shall do this or that. No person shall keep this except under the authority of a license and subject to the regulations. I never saw a thing that says no man shall hunt deer except under the authority of a license or subject to the regulations. It would seem that the law does not regulate a man, only a person. If there's a word that's more common than the word person, I don't know what it is. We say, uh, he's a nice person, or he's a bad person. He showed up in person, or I will deal with him only in person. I heard a doctor say, this disease will spread from person to person. I've heard of personal property. I've heard people say, it's not personal, only business. So basically you would think everyone is a person. Then I learned that there are many different kinds of persons in Canada, in any country. I heard a cop say, he had drugs on his person, on his person. That's the possessive case. So people can have a person. Or we have a search warrant to search your office and your person. Is it possible not to have a person? I wonder if you could show up somewhere or be present somewhere, but not in person. I know of a guy who went to court and talked to the judge, but later he was arrested because he did not appear in person. But if he was there, why was he later arrested? Have you ever stopped to really think what a person really is all about? I learned that in Canada, women became persons in 1929. Prior to that, women weren't persons. So prior to 1929, women could not catch that disease that the doctor said will pass from person to person. And the woman, if she had any drugs on her, the cop would not have found them on her person. She would have to have them maybe in her pocket. I learned that corporations are persons. They can sue and be sued in court. But this person can't drive. This person can't vote. I know that corporations lobby the government. I wonder how they lobby the government. Some other person must drive them there so that they can lobby in person. I learned that the county of Simcoe is a person. Last week, that person said there will be no garbage collection next week. I learned that the city of Toronto was a person. 
This person has to apply for a license to keep protected wildlife at their zoo. The law says they have to apply in person. Some people are put in prison and lose their person. They take their person away from them, probably because there's not enough room in the little small cages or cells they keep them. I saw that the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms guarantees everyone the right to life, liberty, and security of the person. In the U.S., the U.S. Constitution guarantees that every citizen is secure in their houses, persons, paper, and effects. I also learned that a baby is not a person unless it is born, dead or alive. Baby doctors used to be taught that when a pregnant woman came in, they had two patients. Today, they only have one person as a patient. There are groups that want elephants, and chimpanzees, and dolphins to be persons. Then if you shoot one, you will have shot a person. Right now, a chimpanzee is the same as an unborn baby, a non-person. You can shoot either one. There is no legal problem there. Aborigines in Australia, prior to 1940, were not persons. You could get a permit or a license from the British High Commission in Australia to shoot one. That's a fact. So when they shot and killed the Aborigine, they did not shoot a person. They must have shot a non-person. They shot an animal. If he was wearing shoes, if this Aborigine was wearing a pair of shoes, they could not have been his personal shoes. If they talked to him, they would have seen he has no personality. And I'm sure that when the Aborigine said, why are you going to shoot me? The answer would have been, well, I paid a fee for the license to shoot you. It's not personal, just business. Are you confused? Do you still think you know what a person is? Every law, statute, regulation, ordinance, policy that you've ever obeyed applies to persons. Every obligation, duty, responsibility, debt, liability, omission, neglect, prohibition, punishment, allegiance, loyalty, credit, benefit, right, interest, privilege, account, name, address, title, deed, action, performance, etc., 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 applies to every person. So... What can we learn about a person? What does the encyclopedia say about person? It says personhood continues to be a topic of international debate. Hmm. The beginning of human personhood is a concept long debated by law, religion, and philosophy. Christianity is the first philosophical system to use the word person in its modern sense. Thus, the word person was originally a theological term created and defined by Christians to explain Christian theological concepts. Here we go with this God stuff again. What does it have to do with God? How can there be a controversy in philosophy and law about a person or what a person is? All of our laws pertain to persons. If no one knows what a person is, how are people being convicted and sent to jail? So, what do the experts say about a person? Experts on law. Judge Blackstone, judge in the 17th century, he wrote or codified the common law, the unwritten law. He says, persons are divided by the law into either natural persons or artificial. Natural persons are such as the God of nature formed us. Artificial are such as created and devised by human laws for the purposes of society and government which are called corporations or body politic. So a person was created and devised for a society and government, artificially. Bouvier, Bouvier's Law Dictionary, goes back to 100 or so years ago. It says, this word is applied to men, women, and children who are called natural persons. In law, man and person are not exactly synonymous terms. Any human being is a man, whether he be a member of society or not, whatever may be the rank he holds, 
or whatever may be his age, sex, etc. A person is a man considered according to the rank he holds in society, with all the rights to which the place he holds entitles him and the duties which it imposes. So that's saying a, um, not every man is a person, but every person must be a man. But corporations and cities are not men. So that's not, that couldn't be true. What does the Canadian Law Dictionary say? It says a person is any being, any being, that is capable of having rights and duties and is confined to that. Dead, alive, real, imaginary, fictitious, makes no difference. A being, anything you can conceive. Persons are of two classes only, natural persons and legal persons. A natural person is a human being that has the capacity for rights and duties. A legal person is anything to which the law gives a legal or fictional existence or personality with the capacity for rights and duties. The only legal person known to our law is the corporation, the body corporate. As Daniel Webster from Webster's Dictionary has already told us the ordinary meaning of this word, it says, a person is primarily the mask of an actor used on stage. Well, we might as well quote God too, see if he made any persons. He says, do not they blaspheme that worthy name by which ye are called? If you f fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, ye do well. But if ye have respect to persons, ye commit sin and are convinced of the law as transgressors. For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in this one point, he is guilty of all. So, you don't like persons or didn't make any persons. Persons defined in the early 1800s. A human being represented in dialogue, fiction, or on the stage. Character. Character of office. A player appears in the person of a character. In law, a person is one enabled to maintain pleas in court. A person is a person who can plead for things, beg for things. Otherwise, you can't beg for anything. So the birth certificate, your birth certificate, does not represent a human being. The human being appears as the birthed, non-living entity certified by the birth certificate. Can you understand that? <laughs> Confusing, isn't it? Personal. Belonging to men or women, not to things. It's not real. Present in person is not real. Not acting by representative as a personal interview. Personal estate. Belonging to the person as opposed to real estate. Personal identity in metaphysics means sameness of being of which consciousness is the evidence. Personate. To represent by a fictitious or assumed character so as to pass for the person represented. To represent by action or appearance. To assume the character and act the part of another. To pretend hypocritically. To resemble. A mask. Now these are actual definitions. I'm not making this stuff up. Actual definitions from authorities. So a personator, one who assumes the character of another, one that acts or performs. Personification. <coughs> Excuse me. What is personification? The giving to an inanimate being, the figure or the sentiments and language of a rational being. It's called prosopopoeia, as confusion heard his voice. Remember the last video? Confusion of voice. Personify. To give animation to an inanimate objects. To ascribe to an inanimate being. The sentiments, angu uh, sorry, sentiments, action, or language of a rational being. To represent as an inanimate being. Legal personality. 
is the characteristic of a non-living entity regarded by law to have the status of personhood. So what is all this? This is the act of necromancy. Invoking the dead to attain a remedy in law to achieve a justice because of an existing injustice. Conjuring up the dead as a medium, an instrument to achieve a purpose. I know, it's hard to believe. But you think a person is something real. But the person is already the dead thing. And you're giving it life. You're giving life to the dead. Let's see what the masters of confusion say about persons. A person is recognized by the law as such. Not because he is human. No. But because rights and duties are ascribed to him. The person is the legal subject or substance of which the rights and duties are attributes. The individual human being considered as having such attributes is what lawyers call a natural person. A person sorry a person by statute do I have that here? No. A person by statute term may include a firm, labor organization, partnership, association, corporation, legal representative, trustees, trustees in bankruptcy or receivers. Now let's see what other um, encyclopedias say about persons. A person, from the Latin language, is a persona, meaning mask, is a being such as a human that has certain capacities or attributes constituting personhood. Personhood, the precise definition of which, is the subject of much controversy. How can there be a controversy when people are going to jail sorry, when persons are going to jail, and being executed, killed, in person. In ancient Rome, the word persona, in Latin, or prosopon, in Greek, originally referred to the mask worn by actors on stage. The various masks represented the various personae in the stage play. The Roman law, or in Roman law, the word persona became used to refer to the role played in court. And it became established that it was the role rather than the actor that could have rights, powers, and duties because different individuals could assume the same roles. The rights, powers, and duties follow the role, not the actor. And each individual could act in more than one role, each a different person in law. Now, you know what that is. That's a split personality, a multiple personality disorder, schizophrenia. Also, you now know why you have no rights, powers, or duties. They follow the role, not the actor. It's getting good, isn't it? The concept of a person was further developed during the Trinitarian and Christological debates of the 5th through 6th century. Since then, a number of important changes to the word's meaning and use have taken place. And attempts have been made to redefine the word with varying degrees of adoption and influence. Many modern speakers of colloquial English conflate the meaning of role and actor. Means they're confused. Which can result in some confusion when they try to enter into legal discourse. So, this has something to do with this concept of Christ. So if that's true, if you're a Jew or a Muslim, you can't be a person. And anyone born before Christ, B.C., couldn't be a person. So we've only had persons for 2013 years, if that's what a person is. Prosopagnosia, in Greek, prosopon, meaning face. Agnosia, meaning not knowing the face.
It is a disorder of face perception, where the ability to recognize faces is impaired, while the ability to recognize other objects may be relatively intact. An agnostic. A confusion of face. That's where the word comes from. A prosopopoeia. Greek is a rhetorical device in which a speaker or writer communicates to the audience by speaking as another person or object. The term literally derives from the Greek road, uh, root prosopon, face, person. So every time we speak in person, we are speaking as someone else, evidenced by the mask we wear. We are speaking in, in disguise. We are concealing our real identity and putting on an identity. This term also refers to a figure of speech in which an animal or inanimate object is ascribed human characteristics or is spoken of in anthropomorphic language. Quintilian writes of the power of this figure of speech to bring down the gods from heaven, evoke the dead, and give voice to cities and states. So this is necromancy again. Evoking the dead and making cities and states into persons. Personification. A figure of speech in which inanimate objects or abstractions are endowed with human qualities or are represented as possessing human form, also called prosopopoeia. Now you know what an inanimate object is. It's the dead. It's not living. Personification, the act of sorry, right here. The act of attributing human characteristics to abstract ideas. Incarnation, embodiment, giving concrete form to abstract concepts. Are you starting to understand what your birth certificate is? All this is called the occult, the supernatural witchcraft and we practice it every day of our lives don't even know we do it whenever you do anything in person we are evoking the dead as a medium an instrument to do whatever we're doing through as we go on you will see that we act think and speak for the dead in fact we are the medium we are the medium that is used by the occult to give life to the dead to make it seem real, to make it believable. Of course, if, if we said that we act by and through the dead, people would be repulsed. So we will just call it a fiction, a, uh, an abstract being, a, an inanimate being. People will never figure it out. Now you should be starting to get really confused. You should be saying, I find this hard to believe or this is unbelievable. But the real question is, why do we have to do this? Well, the answer is because we are dead in the law. Wait to unravel this for you. Then you will learn the extreme evil in this. Right now, confusing may seem funny, may not seem like any big deal. It isn't until you can picture the whole thing and understand how wrong and evil this is and the results of this that you're going to say, I don't want to be involved in this anymore. I wonder if there are any people that are not persons, non-persons, unpersons. Of course, the unborn baby, the aborigine, and some prisoners are not persons. A non-person is a man regarded as non-existent and having no rights, a man whose existence is systematically ignored. Doesn't exist. Now, how stupid is that? Can't see you unless you're a person. What were the statements I made up front in the very first video? I said that you will not believe it. I said you practice the occult. You do not see things that are there and you do see, see things that are not there called hallucinations and blindness, a severe mental disorder. You see the constitution that you think you are a member of is only make-believe. 
Remember I told you that there are only two ways to see, with your eyes and with your mind. Members of the Canadian Constitution can only be seen with your mind. This is your first glimpse of the illusion, but still hard to grasp. I know. So a non-person, persona cu no exista in Latin. Someone whose existence or presence is not recognized. Someone whose existence is systematically ignored or concealed, especially one whose removal from the attention and memory of the public. So a man, a simple, plain, just ordinary man, is not recognized by the law. Not recognized by the law that you call a legal system. Now I should tell you something. God does not respect persons. Remember we read that earlier when he def defined what a person is? He is a non-respecter of persons. And our law only respects persons. So people who build churches for God, for a place for him to live, well, your church is a person. And that person does not have to pay property taxes. And I can show you exactly where that is in the law. I just thought religious people would like to know that. To have a persona was to be a person, was to have a face before the law. Which is to say, to be recognized as one possessing rights and privileges before a court. Or as being able to give testimony upon the strength of one's own words. One owns words. Or simply as owning a respectable social identity. So if you have no persona, no mass, you have no face before the law. So if you go to court, remember to put on your mask so that you can appear in person. So a mask becomes your identity. It is all the judge can see. You are in disguise. Of course, he only sees it in his mind. So what is a non-person? A man who cannot be seen, no face before the law, no mask. A man who holds no public office. A man who is systematically ignored. A man whose presence is not recognized. A man who does not wear a mask. A man who does not give legal advice. A man removed from the memory of the public. A man who has no rights, protections, privileges, responsibilities, duties, or legal liability. I can tell you that a person has no gender and owns no property. A fiction owns no property because it's nothing. It's a fiction. It's not real. You cannot see a person, smell a person, taste a person, feel a person, or hear a person. It is nonsense. In fact, a person is not a noun. It's an adverb. But you can be made to realize the act of making real a person if you think, speak, and act for it. This is, of course, what is called an insane delusion. Now getting back to the only person known to our law, let's break down the concept as, as it is used in our law. Per means it's a Latin preposition, it means denoting through, near, close, as, through, or with, denoting the agent, means, instrument, or cause. Son, the male issue of a parent, a native or inhabitant of a country, such as the sons of Britain. A son is that which is fathered. A father is he who creates, invents, makes, or composes anything. If a country can have sons, then the country must be their father. Father and son are reciprocal terms, meaning you cannot have a father without having a son. And you cannot have a son without having a father. So person is a process, not a being. A son is a being. 
A person is one who did the act in the place instead of the sun, or by means of the sun, the use of a medium. Sorry. Or the use of a medium. One who acts, one who acts as the sun, in the name of the sun, by and through the sun, and appears to be the sun, is the exact sun, out of the act. In court, this is called pleading into a fiction of law, pleading as the dead. It is an out-of-body experience. This is why a summons to appear is a conjuration, evoking the dead. But you are summoned to appear as the sun in the place instead of the one who by and through the sun, or the dead, did the act the actor fulfilling the role. If I say it a little bit different, you may start to grasp this. It, this is a summons to appear. Summons to appear. It's calling the dead to appear. A court only has jurisdiction over the dead. When I show you in the Unraveled programs the blasphemy of what this is really about, religious people will go berserk. Remember, the Registrar General said your birth certificate was never meant to be used as personal identification. That's right. It only identifies the son. When you use it, you become the person. You become this entity who acted by and through the son, the instrument. You have given life to the dead. This is called a resurrection of the dead. All rise. The court is now in session. A country cannot be a real father and cannot have real sons. It's just pretend. They are called fictions of law or paper fictions. These sons have no connection based on blood but based on affinity. The only person known to our law is one to which we give as a lawmaker a fictional existence. Why? Who's going to obey our commands? Sorry to tell you, but fictions do not exist. They are all in your mind only. So we think, speak, and act by and through this fictional son, thus we are a natural person. The thinking, speaking, and acting can only be done by you, thus the cause of every effect is done by and through you, the living one. So the act was done in person. This is the way the law, the legal system was designed. Doesn't mean it's right. And therefore, I think, therefore I am. I speak, therefore. I must be it. And I act for it. So I guess I am it. The evidence of the abstract or fictional son is your Canadian issued identification. You think you are the same or identical to it. And you may use it as a foundational identity document. Now let's look at the father-son relationship. All law is based on a father-son relationship. The legal term is parens patre, meaning parent of the country. The Prens Patre document has its roots in English common law. In feudal times, various obligations and powers, collectively referred to as the royal prerogative, were reserved to the king. The king exercised these functions in the role as father of the country. Who's your daddy? Gotta know, who's your daddy? Let's look at a fiction of law. What is a fiction of law? A convenient fiction or a misfortunate truth? Fiction means feigned, imaginary, not real. The human persons are as fictitious as the airy ones. This was written about a hundred years ago. You won't find this now. Feign. 
to invent or imagine, to form an idea or conception of something not real, to make a show of, to pretend, to assume a false appearance, to counterfeit, to represent falsely, to pretend, invent, devise, imagine, assume. This is nothing more than fraud. But you're the one that's doing it. No one's forcing you to do it. So it's not a fraud then, is it? But it's fraud. You're being tricked into committing fraud. Now here's man's justification or rationale for this, but it doesn't answer why. I'm just going to read you some things about fiction of law here. It says, fiction of law, or fictions were invented, sorry, yeah. fictions were invented by the Roman praetors, who, not possessing the power to abrogate the law, were nevertheless willing to derogate from it under the pretense of doing equity. Abrogate means to get rid of. So not possessing the power to get rid of the law, what law are we talking about here? What law couldn't they get rid of? This was the Roman Empire. Controlled the whole world. What law couldn't they get rid of? Think about it. And they did this under the pretense of doing equity. Pretense means pretending with the intention to deceive. It goes on to say that um, uh, a fiction of law is the assumption that a certain thing is true and which gives to a person or a thing a quality which is not natural to it and establishes consequently a certain disposition which, without the fiction, would be repugnant to reason and truth. It is an order of things which does not exist, but which the law prescribes or authorizes. Hmm. Fictions of law owe their origin to the legislative usurpation of the bench. The legislative usurpation of the bench. So somebody usurped the bench sat on it and started making laws. The usurpation of whose bench? And then it goes on to say that the law abounds in fictions. Apparently thousands of them. See, a fiction of law is like this. I make a contract with somebody. I make some obligations, some agreements, some promises. And they make some agreements and promises back to me, so I get some consideration for a contract. I'm not going to do something for nothing. Except we impose a fiction of law to create the contract, the agreement. There's nobody there. We just pull it out of thin air. We, it's a pretend person, just so that I can get what I want under this contract or agreement. <laughs> this is in the Canadian Law Dictionary. Fiction, a rule of law which assumes something which is false is true and will not allow it to be disproved. So if you ever think truth is in law, it's not. An assumption by law that something is false is true. A statute may state that X is to be treated as Y. And that's a rule of law. I don't think so. Realistic fiction. Did you know there's such a thing as a realistic fiction? Realistic fiction strives to make the reader feel as if they're reading something that is actually happening, something that, though not real, is described in a believable way that helps the reader make a picture as if it were an actual event. This can also confuse the reader into making the reader think it's nonfiction. So it says that the law abounds in fictions. Really? It does not exist in nature fictions, it said, this thing does not exist in nature. Well, the supernatural doesn't exist in nature either. Do you think our law abounds in the supernatural, the occult, witchcraft, necromancy? It's all supernatural. Anything that produces an unnatural effect is witchcraft. That's what witchcraft is. So, for the trick to work, you have to be an unwitting accomplice. If you knew you were doing this, 
you would know it's a fraud. Also, the trick would have no value unless someone brings the life to fiction, brings to life to fiction, or brings to life to dead. Also, people would ask, why do I have to do this? Can we not just be who we are? The answer is no. Those, those that know would have to tell you the truth about the law and could never take advantage of you. You see, I'm going to explain later in the program Confusion of Money how your property is being stolen half through money. Wait till we get to that. Your whole life you've been acting as an entity that is not alive. You provide all of your labor through and as this entity, it is, only, it is the only entity known to our law. Why? Because it is the only thing we can create in our head. Because we can't create anything. You cannot apply your will to something you do not own. And because you cannot create anything, we have to make you believe so we can steal from you. It's all about stealing. This whole thing is about property and stealing. Okay? Don't lose sight of that. So I've given you the breakdown of the word person as it is supposed to be known. I know it's hard to grasp completely, but it was designed that way. I will explain the complete concept of the person in the unraveled videos. There's more to the story. It is the key to understanding the whole illusion of how you lost your birthright, inheritance, and property. I'm going to end this program with a riddle. Remember, per means by and through or by means of. So when I ask this riddle, some of you people, a light will go off. Here is the riddle. Can you think of anything that can be obtained only by means of the sun? In the next video, we will look at law and government as you are presumed to know it. The groups and people who protest against the government may want to think their, rethink their actions or change direction. You will learn that you have been enticed and deceived into becoming the proximate cause of your own misery. Till then, my name is Marcus.